OG shit, you smell it? No, I'm tapped in with Humble Soul. You might want to tap in, baby, because we get with it. Yeah, damn. A humble soul. Checking back in, man. OG shit, you smell it? Mr. Marcelo in front of the camera once again. Um, I had to chop it back up. You know, we had a little um, issues with the audio, and I told you some stuff happened with some of the footage that I got no from trip. the first Slow interview. We ain't doing no trip. You know, so I appreciate you uh, taking time out to, you know, connect with me again, man. Um, Learn respect. Share a little bit more of your story, you know what I'm saying? Learn respect. Um, man, first and foremost, um, you know, almost three decades ago, more than two decades ago, you released a platinum selling album, Brick Living, mm -hmm. you know, and um, the hit song off that album was, was Han Bruh with, uh, you know, your comrade Dodo, mm -hmm. as well as uh, Wayne Go. Um, I don't think I ever asked you what that recording session was like. Were y'all all in the studio together yeah. when y'all put that song together? Mm -hmm. How did that whole whole thing come about? I, I definitely want to ask you about the video, but talk about just creating the song first. Bro. When we did the um, when we did the song, um, you know, Master P was supposed to be on that song, on oh, Humbro, but he was supposed to be saying the hook because that's actually Master P saying Humbro I'm the real motherfucker you know. But you see, see, murder did it. It was this wasn't a situation where PA won't do it like the baby verse. But it's just that he wasn't there at the time to do the video, so she just stepped in and, and said that. But how bro, I'm the realest motherfucker, you know. Plus, I brought a couple of homies, Wayne going Dodo. That's a uh, that's something that Master P said. But um, when we did the record, like I don't even think Doe was gonna get on that record. Like I got it's crazy, but it's a dude. Um, he off the Parkway, right? That's why I got him, bro. Um, I don't, he's, um, I don't know what you call it, but he, he out, he off the parkway, right? Everybody gonna know what I'm talking about from the city. And he used to be a part of, uh, the No Limit Street team. And every time he talked to you, he'd, he'd be like, Humbra. And that's actually where I get that Humbra from. A lot of people, most people in the city kind of know that though. I didn't know that he was like the first one saying it. Like, soon as you'll say something, like he'll have a conversation with you, he'll be like, huh, bro? I'm gonna show him to you. Mm. Matter of fact, we're gonna find a clip too. Mm. But that's where I got that from. And then, um, like, when I met um, Dodo, like, I ain't know Dodo like that. Like, you know, Dodo had to kidnap one of my cousins. So, me and Dodo wasn't as in friends when I first met him. It was my golf or the victor who, who, he got a lawsuit and he decided to start tough guy. Um, him and Dodo decided to start tough guy. Oh, your, your uh, guy father, My Victor, father Victor, Victor Newman. Victor, yeah. He so he co-founded Tough Guys with uh, Dodo. Yeah. Okay, off my bad. Just just uh, yeah. Clear. So um, but like to to bring it even further back, um, he co-founded Worth the Wait. That's a, a label that me, Devious D, Fiend, Renzo. Trap like me and Fiend been label mates since I was like 14 years old. Musa too. I've been knowing Musa. Musa used to come pick me up from school. Currencies manager. Yes. Me and Musa ran, ran. Like we used to go to clubs. We used to go to fucking uh uh what's the club downtown? Um I, I don't know why the hell I can't think of rumors. But we me and Musa used to run neck and neck. Musa had a black beretta. Me, Musa and Fiend. Musa hooked me up with DVSD. Like my first record was Hey Peep Pop. I think we dropped that in 92. But Musa is the one who was the producer that he produced that out. Like DVSD has DVSD has platinum. Like he's the the go-to guy when you want to know music business in the city. Like he knows about everything. Like that's where I learned my business from. And um so way before that we hadn't already had a company, right? And it was called Worth the Wait. So even then, like, we had this spot called the street from the Calio. There used to be a lady named Miss Glow. She out Gertown. town. So Victor bought our spot, and we painted that mother the same color as Popeye's on Veterans, which was pink and turquoise. But this bitch was across the street from the Calio project. Man, we used to be selling quarters out there, bitch, and everything. Yes. It was a man named Big Rowdy. He used to, we used to be, it was a mother in there, bro. And that's where I got introduced to a lot of Calio people at, because... Like, um, Victor, Victor, real, real last name is Simon, Victor Simon. We call him Victor Newman because of the stories, the young and the restless, you know what I'm saying? But he was like that, like, he was a motherfucker who had all kind of calls and all that kind of stuff, so he really, like, taught me the game and put me, 
more or less into the music because he was even around we did work the way but him and dodo he was messing with dodo's sister so they decided to do tough guys and victor was like all right i'm gonna get my godson because he already knew i rapped i had no idea what bringing me to dodo when i got to dodo that date like they put on all kind of beats and shit and um i rapped off everything like i always used to write so much shit bro and memorize the shit like i couldn't do that today but i my whole brick living album that shit was in my head i didn't only thing i wrote for the brick living album was how you like it baby every other song was already written it was in my head so i had not already i used to do a lot of writing so when i get by um when victor brought me by dodo he don't know how to rap he like all right let him spit something mind you i know this nigga would have kidnapped my cousin so i ain't gonna say I, I felt some kind of way about it i can't say i did right so but vic was like this what we doing i'm like okay but every beat every beat that it was a dude named Courtney who was the engineer then. Every beat that he put on, I had a rapper. Mm. From that day on, me and Dodo was together every fucking day till he died. I'm talking about it ain't good. They, the only time we wasn't together every day is when he moved to Baton Rouge. Other than that, we was together every fucking day. And we made Hambra. Um, first, we did a compilation album. Right? And then... We just start working on more songs with the, the time of them trying to get in touch with Master P. We was trying, we was working on more songs, and Hambro was just a sign I came up with, where it felt like it was something that I came up with, but not realizing that I really was. It was a dude who was off the Parkway who really was used to be walking around saying Humbro, and, and everybody in the city know that dude. Oh, um, to veer off one second, man. What's the situation behind? So you you said when you first connected with Dodo, you were already aware that he had kidnapped your cousin. I don't think like I knew I knew it was a dude named Dodo, right? But like Dodo was a person who I had never seen, I never had encountered with. Keep in mind he was older than me. You say he's older. He's older than yes. You? Oh, okay. The, listen, but I don't even to be honest with you, I don't think at that time I knew. But we had a situation, right? So. Me, Dodo, Wango, C, uh, Boo, Wine, like it's like even Jacko, like out the out the Magnolia, like we used to be like the Magnolia and the Cali, we used to move around together, right? You say C, you talking about C murder? Yeah, we had a daiquiri shop in um Carroll. So my cousin see us. Is she a girl? Oh. She know Dodo. So her and Dodo's sister gets into it because she knows who Dodo is, right? My cousin know who Dodo is. This is the cousin, my cousin Tyson. This is her brother who Dodo kidnapped. So she knows this shit. I don't think I knew it at the time, right? So them two getting into it crazy. And I'm like, it's uh, Debria. And Debria is like my partner. This Dodo sister, this my girl. Though. She has no idea this my cousin. Them two getting into it about the fight. I'm like, nah, D, that's my cousin. They're like, man, you better tell her such and such and such and such and all this. That's how I really found out. And then after we calmed it down and everything, like nothing happened to her. But after we calmed it down, I think either my cousin told me about it, or uh, either she told me or one of my big cousins told me. But by that time, then, though, was fucking jam tight. Yeah. But that was him then. Like, that wasn't him as of now. You know, by the time I met, though, he had to just come home from jail and shit like that. But the Kelly was notorious. That's the fuck they used to do. Yeah. So he was a real deal like stepper before the music. Definitely. Like, that's what people knew him for. Like, Dove rubbed a lot of people in wrong ways then, but that's why I was so, uh, uh, a lot of people were so happy to see the way he turned around. Cause we used to be every one, bro. Like, I, I, I think I told you about when I found out how close him and Stone was. Oh, when, uh, during the beef. And they, they it both, they, really, they, and they both like it was tension. It was tension. No, not that you talking about the. Um, you said they stopped in the middle of the streets. No, uh, yes, um, yes, but that it wasn't really. It was tension. It wasn't beef at that time. For the viewers, Gangsta them hadn't been. Gangsta them was gone by this time. Can you uh just uh for the viewers who are not familiar with the story, can you let them know? What you're All right, talking so about? we get Range Rovers, right? This door the Calio Magnolia. It's not uh, really doing the beef because Gangsta them are already in jail. Um. Dune is already dead. You know, like, 
most of that is is really not anymore. Hot boy, but Stone is still around. You know what I'm saying? And um, so we just we flying down Washington Avenue, right? Saying Range Rovers in the Range Rover, right? We ain't his. We flying down Washington. We used to call this shit called turning corners. We go through every project, going to Saint Bernard, fuck with blinding them. We going to Melf, go go fuck with uh Uncle Lavelle and and Silk. You know what I'm saying? Silk with OG out the Melf too. We go fuck with them. We just used to be spinning all these different kind of ways, right? So, matter of fact, what's crazy is we even saw um, my partner, OGG. We riding, G in the car. G is who I do the podcast with. So, me and Doe riding. Oh, yeah, shout out to him, man. Yeah, me, me and Doe riding, and he see G, right? He look, he tell G something like, I got a job for you. This right before Dodo get killed. This one time when we had saw OGG, like it's a crazy story about them two too, like that's crazy as a fucker. But me and him going out, flying out Washington, like because everybody embraced each other, everybody was cool. It wasn't really no crazy tension, but we knew like certain motherfuckers just didn't want to be around each other. Phew. We shoot down, um, we shooting down Washington. That nigga Dodo C Stone and turn around the middle of the street on Washington and the cell and come back. I'm like, what the fuck is he doing? Cause there's motherfuckers out there like Stone out there, Stepper, there's a lot of motherfuckers that's just out there. He jump out the car, him and Stone meet in the middle of the street hugging and talking. But I never knew their relationship. The same way I never knew, oh, we was talking about KC? Dodo, KC taught Dodo how to fight. And he taught him how to steal bikes. Like I'm telling you this kind of story that I was hearing around them. And like me and Dodo became so much into, in cahoots and as in friends because of, I had so much respect for the nigga Stone. Like Stone, I had a mad, cause Stone was like the giant in the hood, but he took care of everybody, right? So that's like my OG. Then I got OG KC, right? KC like is exactly who I wanted to be. Little, little bit of nigga about his business, always had money, got a lot of women and all this kind of shit. And then I end up fucking with Dodo. He has a relationship with both of them. Mm. Cause I never knew nothing about him and KC neither. Until one day I'm telling him about K, like, okay, K my dog, let me call K. And that's how uh, Dodo end up really, really fucking with Stunner. That's how he got the line on Stunner and shit because him and KC was talking. Like, KC looked at Dodo like a little brother. And what's the connection between KC and uh, Birdman, Stunner? That's like, you could say that's Stunner OG. For sure. You know, his, his, his big home. He used to always shout him out in them early Definitely, early, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, KC inspired a lot of us, bro. Mm. Like, a lot of us through that project. Not just through that project, through the Melf, the Calio, like, even he was a motherfucker who inspired a lot of people. And he's still around to this day. I still have a relationship with him to this day. Mm. That's my OG. Oh, for sure. What about, uh, so I guess the, the Victor Newman, he passed away? Yeah, Victor ended up passing away. Mm. But Victor was, like, what happened with Victor was, so when we started with the weight, Victor was in the streets, right? Mm. So he was hustling and shit. When we started Tough Guy, the crazy shit about it, Victor got hit on a motorbike on a broad, by, broad, by broad and the milk people. And he settled for like a half a million dollars or some shit like that. Because he had a prosthetic leg. And that's what he invested in Tough Guys. Okay. That's where he got the money from with Tough Guys. But we had not already did that shit with Worth the Way. So how did he pass away? He ended up, he ended up having a habit, bro. And he ended up falling victim to his habit. Which oh, is the drug. craziest shit in the world. Drugs? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah, R.P. to him, man. Um, well, you talked about uh, just getting back on track with the session. So I know I veered off for a second to ask you about the whole kid. I think Wango, what happened was, uh, but yeah, take us Wango back. and, and um, well, like, what's the atmosphere, not to cut you off, what's the, is this during the day, this at night? What's the atmosphere like, man? It, it's probably at night, so, right? So, um, Dodo got a, a nephew, uh, I mean, a, a cousin named Lena. Right, nut out the project two out the Cali. So at that time, I think nothing was doing. A company was called CP3. Okay, so they was already putting out music, right? So those was like, man, f we gonna put Wango on you. And I want to say he called another. He probably just called Wango, but Wango come through. Wango, uh, Wango, Boo, and I want to say Flowers, Wine Flowers, and they come through. But like. It was, I think people were so, um, 
was was so in tune to how good I was as a rapper. Like that shit wasn't in that shit wasn't on our mind for us no beef shit. And then you like you gotta understand I'm younger than most of them. You know what I'm saying? But that shit, it wasn't no tension. Cause Doe was like, let me show y'all how hot this little nigga is. I, he let him hear a few songs and all that kind of shit. And we was like, we want you to get on this. But the crazy part about it, let me just tell you what's crazy, right? Let me show you how much it was no tension. The day when I, we, like, you know that video was scripted wrong. It wasn't supposed to be shot in the Magnolia first. I mean, it wasn't supposed to be shot in the Calio first. We were supposed to do the morning scene in the, Cali, in the Magnolia. The night scene in the Calio. The dudes mixed it up. So they were in the Calio at the time when they should have been in the Magnolia. So mm -hmm. that's why the Calio has more or less like a daytime scene. The Magnolia had the nighttime scene, but it was supposed to be opposite. Mm -hmm. But Wango and, and Boo picked me up to come out the Magnolia to bring me in the Calio for that scene. When we, when we were doing that video. Mm -hmm. Like that's how excited all of us was. Like they literally came, picked me up. Boo and Wango picked me up and brought me to the Calio because Donan was there already. Like they started setting up like... But the camera crew probably got there at like 6 o'clock in the morning. Doe be up early. You're going to pay attention to time. So Doe probably be there since 5 o'clock. They calling my phone, calling my phone. By the time I got up, they like, all right, Gio say about to come get you. Swing. Gio and, and um, Boo came got me. Mm -hmm. Man, it's a reason why you mentioned that it wasn't any tension during that recording session. Is it because um, Wayne Go? So he was one of the people who was going against, I guess, gangster and uh, so so. Wango Boo is nine fingers. Who? That's nine fingers. So you talk, ever heard? Talk, talk about the uh, nine fingers. Is, Boo got one of his fingers shut up. But you'll hear Gig speak on it like that's the that's the dude that's some the dudes he was beefing with. That's why you always say man with me about the shit with them coming to the project because it wouldn't have happened if he was around. Which I I, I totally get it, but it's a, it was a new time and era like. He, a part of that shit is like, we knew the Calio from being in the project. Like we knew all them dudes and then Beef took out. So it was nothing for us. That's like us in the mouth. We beef with the mouth, then we get back cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? Cause we right around, we damn near right up the street from each other. Okay. Um, and you was talking about, so that's Wayne go man, but you listen to Dodo's verse on the song. He sound like, a, a stunner man. To, I mean, I, I said a stunner man, like a bird man. We, on, on listen, the low, like he sound like he he talk rapping. We started. He like, spitting game. That's yeah. it, all that is. You get that. You, you know gotta get that credit to Spitter, because though you start always be trying to rap, right? And mm -hmm. Spitter used to be like, no, you gotta game spit that talk. shit. You gotta, you gotta do that yeah, shit like yeah, stunner, yeah. like game. And that's why though raps are more or less like talk raps. But that's all that that Spitter with that shit. Spitter pulled that shit off with it. Hold on, this, did he write his verse? Yeah. Uh, oh, okay, oh, okay. Those who cold, don't thought he was the coldest motherfucker in the world. Wasn't nobody writing a verse one. Like, I'm telling you real talk. Like, dude, you weren't writing a verse one. So, like, we'll tell him when something sounds crazy or something. He'd be like, oh man, fuck, I'm gonna try something else then or some shit like that. But he wrote his own shit. Yeah. I mean, I got a uh, question. Um, you said that Master P was supposed to be on that song originally, but y'all used the sound. Let's just say we. It was Master P saying it on the the hook. So I don't know if even though hollered at P about doing it, but C was around, so it was easy for C to do it. Like this around the time when, you know, like we was like all of us used to be running together before like the Magnolia and the Calio really got back together as in when Slim and C got together. But me and Doe and C and a lot of us was already running together. Mm -hmm. And then Slim ended up coming home. Then him and C Murder locked in. You talking about Soldier Slim? Yeah. Mm. Once him and C Murder locked in, like, he was running, like, it was the, like the fucking DBs and, and fucking back of town from the Cali. Like, cause it was Slim and C. They niggas used to be everywhere together. I wonder how they, they got so close, because two different projects, you know, you know the history. It's a vibe, bro. Like, that's the same thing as me and, me and uh, Doe getting close. Mm. Like, real recognized, real, like, as in everything, you know, like, when you, when you, when you find a motherfucker that you're compatible with, as a motherfucker that you fuck with, it don't really matter where they're from. Sometimes that shit get cut out. Mm. Like, that shit, that shit always happen in jail. Like, I always see niggas that will be connected in jail. 
I'm talking about just because they had to survive together. You know what I'm saying? And when they get on the street, they got a whole different kind of relationship. Yeah. Like, they don't get no fucks about no hoods or none of that kind of shit yeah. because they know when they was down and when they was in the bank, when shit had to go down and they had to look out for each other, they was looking out for each other. Yeah. Like, I remember they got a dude with um, uh, Two Pistol. Two Pistol used to be in the six one. Like, Two Pistol and Doe had that kind of relationship. Oh. Uh, I know, I, I could just tell you a lot of relationships, like Dodo and TB, Spig and Dodo, uh, Spig and TB. Like, it was a lot of that shit, like, you know what I'm saying? And it's just motherfuckers who are in the streets, but from different in, from different areas, like different projects and shit like that. Oh, for sure, for sure. And when, when I asked you about Master P, I thought you were saying he was supposed to nah, be- Nah, I don't think we actually record, like, reached out on Like that. an actual verse. Like, nah, no, no. Uh, okay. You know, that was just his hook. You know, for sure. That actually came from that song, and by C being around, we just like, C, what you go ahead on do the hooks? He's like, I ain't doing no trip, I'm fucking with you. Yeah. Because at that time, C had just signed Wango. Oh, them was under True Records. Okay, okay. Um... Man, just one more question about the Brick Living album. When you see that come out, you know, you got videos on TV, you selling hundreds of thousands of copies. You know, you linked up with No Limit, who was like arguably the biggest rap label at the time. I know you said you didn't actually sign to the label. Uh -uh. Like they just was, they just distributed it and they did the deal through priority. But like what what was um that period period of your life, like the like getting that actual like mainstream Bro, success. I was still in the streets and, and when I found all of that. I was still in the streets when we found out that I record. When we found out that album went gold. I was in the project. I probably, if I'm not mistaken, it's like me, Jerker Man, uh, probably Legal Locksmith, and probably La Nino sitting around, and I got the call like, yeah, the album go. I'm like, yeah. That was, that's what's up, though. Like, I'm about to pull up and come get you. And we did a, a gold party out of that. When we did the gold, the other doing the gold party, I think, um, I want to say that was when um, Slim had first came on when we were doing the gold party. I want to say that. If not, I think Slim probably had came home when we were doing the compilation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but one time Slim came home and came right in that motherfucker and got on the stage. <laughs> that was the night when Spitter took a ride. Oh, yeah. That's that night. He got caught in traffic. Right. Yeah. Slim performed that night. <laughs> he coming there with Bob. Yeah, I remember you No, he coming there with, uh, um, not Bob. Um, well, I can't think of what you call him now, bro. That's crazy. Swab Bob. Swab Bob. Not Bob. Swab Bob. Oh. Rest in peace, Swab Bob. Yeah, Swab Bob was like Pete Banker. Okay. That we used to always call Swab Bob when we needed some money. Say, like, we used to be needing some money, right, before we got the deal structured, before we got the deal right. Doe used to always do this thing. We used to call it kidnapping, right? Mm -hmm. But Doe would call Swab and ask him where he at, and we'll pull up on him and get in the car with him all day until he called Pete. Like, real talk. And then, because we knew Pete was going to have to call him. Like, this wasn't me, this Doe. Doe knew Pete was going to have to call him because he had, he controlled the money, right? Mm -hmm. So we'd be in the car with him all day. We'd have him hanging with us all day. And then when Pete called, he'd be like, yeah, Dodo said they need like 5000 or something. Because that nigga Pete told us, stop hustling and shit. It was like, all right. But Doe just came up with this. But there's a lot of motherfuckers, bro, that I can say that looked out for us. Like, between us getting a deal, after I got through with the album, you got to think, bro, it took us probably two months before we got the check. And, that, and people talking about no hustling. It's a lot of motherfuckers who helped us out, like uh, uh, Herman. It's a dude named Herman. Uh, my partner, Blood. It's a lot of motherfuckers told. Uh, Nino Paul. Um, it's just a lot of motherfuckers who were just helping us out like that and throwing us something because they knew we were about to get the money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they throw us something knowing we're going to come give it back soon as we get our shit. Like, I remember when we first got our money, when our money cleared, boy, we couldn't wait to pull up all them niggas and get them niggas their money back. Uh, yeah. Because it was, a, it's a, it was a different ball game of it. Like, we were just, we... And they had no idea the kind of money we was going to get. So can you uh, just give the viewers a little insight on the actual like con contractual agreement with uh, Master P and No Limit? Since you All right, this how it went. I, to, it, to put it in a small yeah, term, yeah. this how it went, right? Master P co-signed me, right? 
he did all the production for the album. Put anybody that wanted on the album, and he went got a, and he got a million dollars for it. He gave us five hundred thousand, but what he was supposed to do with his other half of the money was promote the second leg of the album. Cause you gotta remember, um, Brick Living went gold with one single. All, only only video you ever saw was How You Like It, Baby. Hold on, sir. The Humbra, uh... Humbra. Actually, we shot that down there ourselves. Okay. So Humbra mostly was a part of the compilation, right? But what we did was we made that my single. Okay. Because we hadn't already shot it. Like, Humbra didn't come from, when we shot Humbra, that wasn't no money paid by priority. But the video when you on the football field and all of that. Now you can't, you see the difference? You know, we yeah. shooting that shit, the, the Super Dome yeah. and all that shit. <laughs> I out there, you see the difference, right? Sure. They sprayed the shit, tough guy and all that kind of shit, like that was going on there. So, fucking Humbra probably cost it, I think we give, give Chris them like 40, 30,000 or some shit. And imagine what fucking how you like it, baby, cost it probably two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Man, I was about to say like half a million. Or I don't know, yeah, bro. Yeah, Cause yeah, listen, yeah. what you don't know is you know them when we in the hot tub, you know where that's at? Mm. That's the fucking Superdome locker room. Yeah. The Superdome. Like now I can look back at that shit and think, why the fuck did we have to go to the Superdome locker room? No, you ready for this? T what now? We put P in that video. So I was like, why the fuck do I need the Superdome? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But but I guess that was him trying to make it high quality and all that kind of shit. We made a whole lot of money off how you like it, baby. You talk your ass off. For real, for real. Look back at 106 and Park with uh, mm -hmm. AJ and Free. Uh, with AJ and Free. Yeah. You remember on the commercials when they're doing all that talking? Remember what you was hearing in the background? Bam. 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 But uh, that was my instrumental. I know that had to be like some, some like some pep rally themes you saw back there. I'm, I'm sure it went crazy. I the, don't know, bro, because by the tune stuff. that shit kicked, we was out of here. Yeah, I wasn't performing at a lot of. Uh, we was gone. We was on tour. Okay. When I shot, where you at, Wardy? Why you? If pay attention to this, right? I'm in two scenes on where you at, Wardy. One in the project. And you one in the SUV. And one in that. What you call? It? Okay, that's yeah. two different days. So, the day we shot, um, what it? I was leaving for tour that day. I was leaving on my promo tour. I was about to be gone for four to five days. So my buses was out there waiting on me to get you shooting that shit. Mm. So as quick as I got you shooting it, that's why I'm not in magic scenes. Remember they went to the night war and all that. As quick as they got you shooting it, I was on the road on my way to Miami. Back to business. Yeah. That was priority though. They had them put all that. They had them scheduled me a promo tour and all that. So yeah, that, I think that's the part you left out. So he co-signed for you, but the album came out through priority though. Mm -hmm. Okay, which was a major label had. Because so he had a distribution deal through priority. Exactly. Say, I mean, we go to Pete. I want the shit to go platinum because in the times everybody going platinum. I don't tripping out no go. And P gave us some game. P gave us some jewels, but we ain't, we wasn't fucking with it. P said. Because, all right, so, mind you, like, when I first do the album, like, I, I have fucking T-shirts everywhere. Every motherfucker in the city had a Tough Guy T-shirt. Mm -hmm. Like, we was swinging them bitches. It was like, anything, like, what we wanted, we used to always see how, what P had, like, the Body Body T-shirts and all that kind of shit. We like, we want that kind of promo. P said, I'm going to show y'all. And nigga sent us 40 boxes of shirts. You could see him, bro. They still got people in the city to this day that still have the t-shirts, tough guy t-shirts. He sent us 40 boxes of t-shirts, right? All different sizes. He sent us like five, ten boxes of handkerchiefs for people to tie around the head. Like we gave that shit all over. So that's what made Tough Guy brand. Mm -hmm. Like people were not realizing what we was doing, but we was following the Master P method. Man. He was smart though, cause when the, when Mr. The, the, with the post, some post album came out, Mr. Postman, what he called himself? Uh, yeah, the, uh, sent us them motherfucking boxes too. They yeah. say get him away too. Yeah, uh, but oh, that's man. what he was doing. Like we, well, we flooded the city with them bitches. Yeah. So we made like it was like, um, y'all had the little posters and stuff. We had, the yeah, like we yeah. had everything. Bro. Yeah. And they were sending us boxes of that shit because you gotta understand, I'm I, I'm with a major. The first leg of it, the major takes care of everything. The second leg, P takes care. So they got to recoup. 
They gonna recoup. But I'm just telling you, for the budget, anything I need, mm -hmm. I don't call people. I call Priority Records. Hold on. So if, if they hit them with a with an M, don't you got to recoup that though? They got. Oh, we got to recoop that's all what, that that's money. What, that's yeah, what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. But yeah. they're going to do their part. But I can honestly tell you, bro, it's more than an M. Because you got to think about this. P got five hundred thousand. We got five hundred thousand, right? They still pay for the printing, the T-shirts. None of that came out of our money. So out of that five hundred k, how much do you personally take home? Two hundred and I. Two, wait, bro. I don't want to lie to you because I'm going to tell you this. Me, Victor, and Dodo, because we all was runners of the company. I remember the split, but I actually can't remember it now. But we got like the same thing. Okay? We took care of our other partner, Tweet, our other partner, Big U, and we put money into the Tough Guy account. The Tough Guy account, I ain't never heard of no shit like this, too, though. But this kind of, this, the, this the kind of shit that dope used to come up with, right? So, in order for us to get an account for the tough guy shit, two of us had to have a signature on the shit. Wow. But I never knew nothing. I understand that shit now, but I'm telling you, we was doing that back then, so that's how fella nigga was with business. Two, yeah, they had two signatures. Yeah, they had to be him and Victor, me and Victor, me and him, or him you know what I'm saying? But he put, he struck it that shit like that. That's and we, I ain't mm -hmm. know where we got that shit from Swab out. Swap house. Swap box. Oh, swap box. Oh, 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 yeah. Pete. The one you say he got kidnapped. He's teaching us as we ride around with him. Yeah. He's teaching us shit. Though. Okay. Like we learning the game from him as we riding around. He teaching us shit. But I ain't never knew no shit about no double signature on no check. Mm -hmm. But he did that so as in uh, to make Victor feel comfable because Victor was wild at the time. Victor was still in the streets and shit. Oh, was he but, like, he was like a big, not to cut you out, like a big dog? Oh, he like a, been a big time of before he. Um, he was a big timer before. He was a big timer back in the game when we was doing fucking weight. Um, worth the weight. When you say a big timer, you I'm, mean like a kingpin? Yeah, definitely. Mm. Oh, Vic! Everybody know Victor. Mm, good. Like a say, bro. Like Victor's first motherfucker. Know the first car I ever wrecked? Know what I learned? Well, I, I ain't gonna say that's how I learned how to drive because. Uh, my partner Rashid, you have, you know Rashid from the Magnolia. Yeah, that's my the, partner. Is he a barber? Yeah, he stayed next door to me. That's the one who uh, Rashid out the Magnolia. Yeah. Body, body. <laughs> so yeah. one time Rashid didn't get a rock runner, right? <laughs> what they do is so we pass in front of the door. All our mamas outside talking to the nigga who we got the call from. So we know he didn't ride it on us. Rashid and them tell me. <laughs> Say, listen, we gonna get out, we gonna walk down the street, and you drive the car down the long driveway, right? Now, the long driveway is just straight shot. I made it down there. Now, once you go down this hump, it's Willow Street that you cross, but our driveway goes kind of like this, because it's a church behind me. I hit every motherfucking thing back there. Boy, did I? And I parked that bitch. I hit every, that was my first time driving. <laughs> I hit everything back there. Now my second wreck was, it wasn't really a wreck though. <laughs> me and my pilot, uh, Sweet Pea, Victor, give me his car. It's the, the uh, Victor was the first nigga that had the convertible cutlass. Remember they had the convertible cutlass with the ball on the top? Mm. Nigga had a green one. I'm riding around with that. I had the fucking cell phone, you know that big ass cell phone? Mm. Yeah, it's that, that's how oh, big, the brick, the brick uh, that's how, yeah. how hard he was balling, right? Yeah, back then. Me and Sweet Pea in the car, I hit the fucking curb. Fuck his rim up. Damn. What's the odds of that? Was he even tripping? He ain't getting no fucks. That nigga told that bitch to say, I ain't tripping, you're gonna work it off. I was working at I was working at worth the weight at the time. Oh, okay. He was like, you're gonna work it off. But I really didn't work it off. Because after that, like he started I I after that, like I started driving him around. Mm -hmm. But I really didn't work it off. Like that's the nigga who I can see. Between him and Stone, that's niggas who gave me real opportunities. And I ain't talking about just niggas, you know how niggas will give you straight opportunities, right? Like I'm talking about motherfuckers realizing your talent and giving you opportunities outside of that. Cause I mean, I told you about the story one night with me and Sweet Pea trying to rob something and Stone asked me what the fuck I'm doing. No, I don't think you told me that one. It's a late night, right? <clears throat> so they got a duel on the um a, 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 a little buggy around the corner that we see it, right? So we really want to go robbing, right? But at the same time, I'm trying to get some shit from Stone because me and Sweet was hustlers, right? Sweet Pea stayed right next door to the gangster. 
that's how I, I mean, gangster relationship is like that, you know, because Sweet Pea was one of my best friends, and they stayed right next door to each other. So I'm hollering that when we see Stone, it's like it's like three in the morning. This how Stone used to be moved. It's like three in the morning. Still up. He moved. He in the car. Getting to it. Yeah, I think at that time he got the green Lexus or something, right? He high about what y'all doing out here and all that, right? Now, mind you, in this time, I'm into music, but I ain't really pop, so I'm discouraged on the shit. So I'm asking him, like, what's up with some shit? Like, trying to get some work. I, man, Stone looked at me like, like, all right, I got you. That nigga left, come back, and he gave me a brown paper bag. I think, I don't want to lie, bro, I won't say it like it had like $3,500 or something. Now. And told me, man, you better get your good rapping ass on back to rap. Like Stone was that kind of nigga. Like Sweet right here with me. Me and Sweet plotting on. Stone crazy. Stone is one of the reasons got me smoking them fucking black and miles. Hey man, I wasn't smoking no black and miles. Stone used to have that bitch in his mouth and shit like that. Like I developed that fucking habit fucking with him. Just like you know a nigga emulating what they see. How did you um connect Stone? He was older than you? Yeah, definitely. Um like coming up in the Magnolia earlier on, like what's your earliest like memories of uh, Stone back then? Hey, was he always like one of the uh, well-known people in y'all projects when you was coming up? Had that Definitely. reputation? Like, I think like as in coming up, like I knew about him boxing. I knew he could fight his ass off, right? And then I think I got the opportunity to probably like meet him. Um, I'm gonna lie, bro. It probably was a dice game or something where I met him. Like, that mother, he was a motherfucker with them dice, and I was a dog on them dice. Mm. Like on Willow Street, I was a motherfucker on them dice. For like really? I used to bust niggas' ass on them dice. I ain't had no lot of money, but I would kick niggas. Like Magnolia Chop grew up right across the. You know, Magnolia Chop grew up right across the fucking. We all in the same courtway. Magnolia Chop right across the courtway. And I used to tear niggas' ass up on dice, right? And I think I went probably in the sixth quarter in Belmont or something and started fucking with him on some dice and he just took a liking to me. But I always been around all them kind of dudes. Like I grew up with like Claudia B, um, Booby Black, Gangsta, T, uh, TB. Like I grew up around all them dudes. Cause like as soon as I turned the corner, I'm looking at on that fucking porch, that's round of commotion and that's it's the stunner before stunner. A lot of people don't mention Round the Camus though. Round the Camus was the stunner before stunner, bro. Like that Camus fan, boy, they had some fucking money. And, and they stay right across the street from Claudia B. In the projects. Right. Claud Claudia is like, I think, um, I don't know what the fuck it was. Gangster told you what it was, but he had a Mac 10 or some shit. Like, they ain't never saw no gun like that. Like, we used to be, say, bro, when I was coming up, we had. German Lugers, you know what that is? Yeah. Like big old fucking 22 that's heavy as a motherfucker. Like we had that, and like when they talk about nine millimeters and shit, probably the first gun I seen, I want to say it's an eight millimeter. You know how heavy that shit is? It's the eight millimeter. It's either the eight millimeter or ten millimeter. This is a big heavy ass gun, bro. I heard the ten milli supposed to be kind of. Yeah. It's just an old gun. Though. This bitch is so heavy. Like this what niggas used to rob niggas with. They smack the piss out you with it. You gonna get your mind right. Oh, this bitch, it's like a, like, I remember the 22 German Lugo, that, that bitch was heavy, them big old heavy guns, man. They looked at, like, play guns, the fucking barrel on them, that long and all that kind of shit. Like, that's the first guns I seen. Mm. Then they went around the corner. But, like, I told you, bro, like, we literally, bro, I was going to green, right? So, days I ain't go to school, all us will walk down fucking Ferret Street to, it was a, um, but we go to all schools and jump niggas and take their polo jackets. Mm. Me, Booby Black, Gangster, Cardi B. It was a lot of us fucking the pop. It just was a. It was just everybody out the project that wasn't going to school. Oh, we would walk down for restaurant and jump people and take and their jump, jackets. Boy, if we saw you with a polo jacket on, well, we fuck you up and take your polo jacket. I remember say, bro. I told you, I remember uh, we talked about this off camera though, right? Oh yeah. So yeah. we whoop, so we jumped oh, somebody, yeah. right? Yeah, talk to you, tell the story. Take their polo jacket. So this is what we used to do. I was going to I was going to Sammy J. Green. 
Only people was going to green. I want to say, um, only people was going to green. Like everybody was going to Wilson. Me and Claudia B was going to green. But before we go to school every morning, everybody would walk upstairs by Claudia B house and get a different color polo jacket. Right? Boom, I get me a polo jacket. I go to school. I'm cutting. I'm sitting on this little thing outside Sammy J. Green that's in front of store called Wagner. A dude sit on side me and put a gun on my side and say, give me my motherfucking jacket. And I looked. I said, nah, my mama bought me the jacket or some shit like that, right? I hustled, I don't know what the fuck I said. That nigga pulled that jacket back and his name was in it. His name was Cycle. <laughs> I get that nigga's jacket, I couldn't wait to get back to the project. I go in the house. Everybody used to be in Claudia B house. I go in the house. I go tell everybody, Booby Black in there. So, Booby Black, like, I know what that is. Psycho. Black go back and get my fuck. It's not my jacket, but Black go back and get that same exact jacket back. I remember this jacket like it was, say, bro, it was the orange polo. It was the green polo jacket with the orange man on it. I'll never fucking forget that jacket. And the dude whose jacket it was that y'all stole. I don't. Eat, I don't think we probably got it from Cycle. We probably Cycle probably let somebody wear it because Booby Black and Cycle knew each other. Oh, okay. Because he was, as it went on, like Cycle became one of the niggas who was running around with us when we were taking the jackets. So I think he let somebody wear the jacket and we got them because you got them in that time. Mm -hmm. Like everybody was wearing each other's shit. And Booby Black went and took the jacket back. Oh yeah. Oh, Black was different, bro. But we black. Oh, black mean? was different. Man, Everybody, man. motherfucker, you be scared of that of black. Cause he looked it like that. Boy, nobody didn't want no problem with black then. What was his, uh, are y'all around the same age? I'm black older than me too. Like what was his, was his reputation like Stone's in uh, the Magnolia? Definitely. Like Stone's reputation was just more or less like black them of booby black and booby black like more of my time a little bit so I could hang with them a little bit. I couldn't hang with like Stone. I got so I got to see more of Booby Black ass than growing up. But like Stone is like black them Stone and Black and Mo is like what you would consider like Booby Black OGs. Okay. But I know about Black and Mo too. Like that's the first nigga I seen with two different colored jobs. I never saw that shit before a day in my life. He got shot that they pulled him out, they was pulling him out the driveway and he had a, a two different colored jobs. Like that nigga was on some fly shit. When he got killed, he had on two days? No, I'm talking about when he got shot. This time when he got shot in the project, he didn't get killed. Oh, okay, okay. But this nigga had two, like, that nigga was fly. Like, that, the, the, the know you was always known for being fly, bro. I want to ask you about, uh, about him, but with Booby Black in particular, I'm familiar with him now more so because of um, his connection to uh, Kevin Gates and stuff like that from years ago. And then, you know, obviously he, st he stands out with the one arm and... Mm -hmm. Just how he communicates, just his, his persona online. But um, I wasn't really familiar with like his his ties to New Orleans, cause you know Kevin Gates, that's a Baton Rouge mm -hmm. artist. But um, I ain't. I know think it. people have a I lot more respect. History. Oh, I ahead. think yeah. people a lot, have a lot more respect for um, Boo Black if they understand the shit that he he went through. Like that's motivation for niggas like me. Like I be looking at that nigga like they say that I wasn't supposed to make the nigga you wasn't supposed to make it. But a lot of motherfuckers just don't really, like, he got a, um, got he got his own DVD out right now, I ain't yeah. dead y'all go check that out, my OG. That kind of shows you his story so you see the shit that he been through. So for a nigga like me who come up under him and seeing things that he done, I appreciate that shit and that shit puts me in his own, um, boy, if that nigga can do it, I can put it off. What do you think about, um... You know him and you know Gangsta. What did you think about like that whole back and forth and the controversy when Gangsta came out and um, said that he actually had cooperated on somebody? I don't get into that. Like, I don't get it. Them two friends, like I don't get into friends business. You know why? Because once them two niggas get the back together, somebody gonna be mad at you. I'm sorry, I'm Just hold it. A humble soul, man. We took a, we took a brief intermission. We back at it. Before we left off, I had asked you about the, uh, you know, Stay out of family business. The spat. With, uh, yeah, like Booby Black, Black and Gangsta. Yeah. Stay out of family business. For sure. You got a relationship with both of them. Right. right. Coming up, you did. For sure. Definitely. Um, go man, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I do want to know. You about to say something. Go ahead. I Come do. On. I, nah, I, 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 want, I want to take a step back. You, you mentioned on. that during the brick living days when you found out that the album went gold, 
you were still like in the streets, you was in the projects. Definitely. If you had received an advance, like hundreds of thousands of dollars, why were you still like around that same element? I had, uh, what, around that time, why? Like that was just the error. I was about to say I hadn't received the money because I was still in the project before I received the money, right? But even after that, like that, what the fuck else? We wasn't doing nothing, we was chilling. Like I'm not telling you I was out there hustling or nothing, but I probably was. But I'm saying like, what, what you expected me to do? Like that was, that's what I knew. Like I was round motherfuckers that I come up with. Like, mm -hmm. like it's not like a nigga got no money and went ran and moved to a different state and no shit. So I was still in the same spot. Like my mama was still living in the project when I got my first job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was figuring out how to buy a house. Like we had to look for how that shit that is, that everything is a process, all right? So when I got that bread, you know what I did with my bread, bro? I got a, uh, uh, I ain't even had no account. I'm telling you real talk. I was, I used to be scared of banks. Like, I ain't know, like, where my money would end up at. So, you know what I used to do? I got a cashier's check, right? And, like, if the cashier's check was $120,000, I'd go to the bank, get in that cashier's check, say, give me $5,000, put the $120,000 $120 back in the cashier's check, take the fees out the five. I'm telling you real talk, that's what I was doing for a long time. Like cashier's checks. And I cut a hole in my mattress and stuck that bitch under there. When I gave my mama, I gave my mama 40 G's. You know what she did with it? Put it in the freezer. So, and that's what I'm used to. Like, I'm used to seeing money around, so I don't really know nothing about no banks and all that kind of shit. Back then. I had no idea about that shit. Man, um... Was it known the amount of money that you received back then? Like, did your peers, like your people in the hood know? Did you become a target because of that? Nah. It wasn't nothing like that because, like, the, the, the people in the hood is the reason why, why I, was, I became who I was. Like, I always say I credit that Mr. Marcello shit in New Orleans. Like, everybody put on when they came to that tough guy shit. Like, we had motherfuckers from everywhere. Like, when we moved, we used to move, but we had people from every fucking world. You talking about so, different parts of the I'm city? I'm talking about everywhere in the city. <clears throat> and everybody like, got, a, got along. Uh, Calio, Magnolia, St. Thomas, Florida, Desire. You got to remember, like, don't know a lot of people. I knew a lot of people, and people around us knew a lot of people, right? Plus, we was doing something different. Like, it was companies before me, right? Like... Big boy, take full, thing like that, right? But you gotta realize, like, as quick as I got on, I was on fucking BET. Like, I was in the project watching myself on BET. So you gotta imagine how fast it happened for me. You gotta look at how people around me looking at that shit, like, damn, this shit really popping. And we really still around. So, I don't think motherfuckers even had the opportunity to think about hating because the shit happens so fast. Like, they had no time. Like, it was joy. Like, they had no fucking time to hate. That shit really happened. In their eyes, it happened fast. In our eyes, it took a minute. Because we waited like two months for a check, but we were still around. When we got the check, bro, um, we got our calls. Got the studio, but we were still around. Like, we were still out everywhere, going to clubs, shit like that. Like, and at that time, I had, I was just finishing up my second album when Dodo got killed. So, like, we moving with Slim and Cena. When Slim and Cena moving, we moving. If we moving somewhere, we see Slim, he rolling with us. Like, we all moving. Like, Slim had that kind of money. C had that kind of money. Like, this shit wasn't... It's motherfuckers who had more money than me out there. And in this time, bro, it was it's fucking dope deal to have more money than me. So it wasn't nothing about being no talking. I was just more or less like, um, people really was like, I was, motherfuckers was glad I made it. I can honestly say that when it came to that shit, bro, that's why I be having so many connections everywhere. Because motherfuckers was really like, yeah, that little nigga made it. But, and at the time, I was a different sound coming from the world. Yeah. Like, nobody, like, I was rapping like niggas that come from NY. Or, uh, like, I was on that ball shit 
so niggas was even thinking about Back like then. brick living they got bars in there yeah. metaphors and all that kind of shit like me and we come up around that shit so i was more or less like like i i was so love i ain't but the hate wasn't nowhere around her. oh for sure like, that's man. why she was so crazy when Dodo got killed you want to talk about that man for the for the viewers tuning in who may not be familiar with dodo and just you 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 talked about his impact you know what i'm saying but as far as like his actual passing his death what you mean? What you want to know? Uh, like, it's what, just what, what is that? What exactly happened to him? If he was like a, a loved and respected person in New Orleans, like bro, what like, he left? Um, was he still one foot in the streets? Uh, not really. I think. I mean, Doe wasn't really in the streets at the time, and a lot of motherfuckers probably don't believe it. But we wasn't. Listen, bro. Like we had to saw this shit work, and it wasn't no reason for streets. Listen, bro, at the time when Doe got killed, we had a fucking $5 million deal on there. What the fuck he gonna be in the streets for? Russell Simmons told us to get Master P and Baby on the same song, he's gonna give us $5 million. So we had a whole, we had a stupid deal in place. So, no, Doe wasn't, you remember the shit I called you about, told you about turning corners? That's what Doe was doing. Like, me and Spitter saw Doe right before he died. All us, um, our potty them all dirty and had a spot. So we all hanging at the spot, right? Now mind you, Dodo always will let like spit a ride with him. Right? At that time I'm living in the Cali, yo, like, I'm more or less not like into the ride, but he always let spit a ride and let spit a drive. So, it's a fucking brand of rain, bro. You know what I'm saying? So that day we all out there, spit a pull up, I pull up, we all talking and shit, get drunk at the bar. Don't say I'm about to go turn some corners. Spitter say I'm going with you. He said, no you're not, bitch. You're going with your partner. Spitter was mad as a motherfucker, right? I'm like, man, I'm about to go back inside. Cause I already got to, I'm, I'm living in the Cali with, with somebody, right? I'm like, I'm about to go back inside, bro. I'm going to the spot. No matter of fact, I'm living in Georgetown. I'm like, I'm about to go back to the spot. Phew. I shoot, Spitter shoot. Spitter didn't actually go back to the studio, I think. Oh, <laughs> uh, maybe like uh, that shit happened so fast. Maybe like an hour later, nigga was calling my phone saying, "Nigga just shot you." And the situation. So he said he was just driving, driving around. Uh, we call it turn the corner. We go to every hood. We pop in every hood. We go see this nigga. Go. We got ties in every hood. We go in the six four. Go see uh, two pistol. We going downtown. We go see OG Terror. Terror out the Terror out the Cali. But he was hanging out there. We. Go in the night wall, we go see a, um, oh, uh, well, I can't think of his fucking name, man. He passed too. But it's like this place that we used to go in, just go fuck with our people. Did he, did he get, um, killed in his actual area? Like his hood? Mm -mm. Uh. Do I kill him in the seven wall. Coming out of Cleveland, stopped to get some cigarettes, and, um, got out the car and nigga ran him on, ran him on. Bro, listen, two things. When Doe first got killed, I wasn't tripping. I was like, well, that nigga gonna be all right. We just got some shit that we got to deal with. I never thought he was dead. Oh, no, he did, bro. Another thing is the crazy part. If the nigga would've had a belt on, he wouldn't be dead. We used to wear these stupid ass rags around our pants, right? Because we used to wear these big old pants. His fucking pants fell and fell to his ankles and clipped him. And nigga got the chance to get him. That's how nigga got him. Yeah. And that, cause he fast as a motherfucker. Like running him down, nah, it wasn't gonna be that easy. It's a short nigga my size, right? Yeah. Slim, but he's in shape. That nigga was, though, was fast as a motherfucker. So you wasn't gonna catch him. But that's how quick, like, as you ran that fast, phew. That's pants fell. Yep. Even when they called us and told us he was shot, we ain't think he was dead, We oh. pulled up to that shit. They even took down the ambulance and all that shit, right? But we, I, I could guarantee you, I, I never thought he was dead. Oh, so you pulled up to the scene after everything happened? Yes, they, they called us that fast. So y'all saw, saw him out there? We saw them. Ambulance took him. Like, it wasn't like they declared him dead out there. Did, did it ever come out, like, why somebody would want to do that to him? Probably all kind of rumors. Niggas say all kind of shit, bro. When it come to that shit, like, you know, niggas be on 
You hear this, you hear that, you hear this, you did that. You talking about you kidding? But I know it's not. I, oh, I know, yeah. like, like what I can tell you is this, right? Because a lot of people had this fucked up. A lot of people thought on uh, Tank, I was the same, but no, killed him. That's bullshit. That didn't happen. I know that for sure. I talked to Tank. Rest in peace, Tank. But, like, Tank grew up with us. Like, he, Tank, there's a lot of motherfuckers who, like, grew up with us and moved out to different places, but people didn't realize that we still was connected with them. But Tank grew up in the Magnolia. So I knew Tank personally. So I was able to talk to Tank. Like we, me and Tank had a conversation about it. Because a lot of people had shit mixed up thinking, like it was just so much shit mixed up to what, to make them think Tank did. Cause what happened was we had a fight, right? We had this big fight and it's a Jadakiss concert. Jadakiss got the dogs on the stage and all this kind of shit, right? He's at the well, Rough Rider days. Rough Rider. <laughs> so we have a fight, right? And I end up having a fight with a dude named Tank. Right? This is not that tank though. So people automatically assumed, and the way we walked out there, bitch, like we walked out there like an army. Like we walked out there with Big U swinging the gun like this. Right? So people was like, Tank did it because of that. If that were the case, Tank would have killed me. I'm the one who had to fight with. You see what I'm saying? Now, the, like, the reason how I know exactly who the dude was, it's crazy, bro, how shit happened. I got a Cadillac truck at this time. The fucking daiquiri shop in the east. Popping, right? I pull up. There's some niggas in some little vets pull up, right? They swinging and they all trying to get in line, right? So I'm waiting, but I'm about to poke in the spot right there. So it's a little dude like, let me get right there because they just trying to line all the vets up. And I'm like, you know what? I I back up, let him get there, right? When he get out the car, I'm still in the car, right? So I'm seeing him walk up to the car, like, fuck. He like, you don't even know who I am, huh? I'm like, nah. He like, I'm Tank. I'm like, you don't know fucking Tank? He like, man, we had a fight in the fucking daiquiri shop. I mean, we had a fight in the fucking warehouse years ago. Oh, the Jada Kids. Right, at the Jada Kids, but that was that Tank. Not the other one. No, but he was from the Seven Wall too. Like, but I never knew that dude. That's why people got into that tank shit when they got on it because the word was we had a fight with tank them. We did have a fight with tank them, not that tank. I'm thinking this dude, I'm gonna say definitely he was from the same world. Like, I saw this dude, like, he made me realize it because I didn't know him. And we at the fucking dagger shop, bro, and that dude literally walked up to me and tell me, you know, but, but this is Dodo Dead. This fucking, at least six, seven years later, we old and all this kind of shit. So. It wasn't fresh. No, no, indeed. This shit, and we both doing some shit. I'm in a lag truck, he in the thing, I let him in. So we're not on that kind of time, and he literally, I'm walking, I'm looking at this nigga walking up to my car. Bro, I can tell you, like, there's motherfuckers who know this story. When the, matter of fact, you know who I know who it was? I think the twin, one of the twins out of St. Bernard was with me, a, a girl. A twin out of St. Bernard, one of the twins out of St. Bernard, because she, I want to say she is who let me know that he was out the project also. You dig, but I mean that nigga really walked up on my car and was like, you don't even know who I am. I'm like, no, I don't know. That's kind of dangerous. <laughs> I got that bitch on me though. Bro, listen, like, listen, what niggas don't know is this, right? I ain't never really got in a lot of trouble. You know, I, st I got a, I still told a legal gun to this day. I've always had legal gun. So I always had a gun on me. Like, even the young niggas, like, I remember like T Y them used to be like, Say, get in the car with me, OJ. You'd be like, nah, I'm getting the car with myself. Because a lot of them didn't have legal guns. The soldier and uh, Le Juve. I think Le Juve probably had a legal gun, but a lot of them dudes didn't have legal guns. I had a legal fucking gun. Like, I told, listen, bro, I've been through shit and been incarcerated, but I've never done no major time. I've never been convicted of that. So, like, I was, I had an FN for niggas, knew what the FN was in that city. Like, I put, I, I found out about the FN from a nigga from Alabama. I went to Alabama, a nigga booked me for a show. A nigga showed me him shoot a fucking can. 
When he shot the can, bro, they had a liberty hole and on the other side that bitch was tore up. I said, what the fuck is that? He said, it's an effing. I brought that bitch. That bitch was like eating. $1,200, some shit. Back then. It, yes, bro. Like I been had that shit, bro. And that was when like, but Birmingham was like another spot. That, shout out to my OG Birmingham Boo. Like Birmingham Boo put me on that. I ain't know nothing about that. That's a nigga who go hunting and all that kind of shit, bro. Like he put me on that shit. And I called every, all my partners. Yo, whoa, you ain't never saw no shit like this. But you know, we used to call them, bitch, we used to say, you know what, this them guns, you know when the, the um, niggas be in the army, they be shooting their gun, you see them pull that little bitty gun up and they be shoot so many times, we're like, that's what the fuck that was. How many times does it shoot? FN, you could get 30 in that bitch. Come with a 20 round clip, but you could get the extended, oh, extended, extended clip. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, the stand but like, motherfuckers ain't no shit about that, bro, when we first got them guns. Yeah, you know. And I didn't get it on no... Rah, rah, rah shit. It was a nigga who I fuck with who was a promoter who used to bring me out to shows and he showed me the fucking gun. And I was like, what the fuck is that? I'm a nigga, I could buy a gun. Where that bitch at? Let's go. Do you remember um, when you first started like towing pistols and stuff? As a youngster? I just told you the German Lou, the 22. No, I was talking about what age? Uh, uh, I had to be like 12, 13. So since then. <coughs> me too, me now, me now, me now it's legit. So, have <coughs> you developed like a put together like a own like a, a arsenal of different, different? I love it. Yeah. <coughs> oh yeah, I love that stuff. Like I was a shooting range and everything. For real, uh, I love that. I like the shooting range, man. I, I love the shooting bro. range. Okay, um, I, I do want to ask you this, man. Getting back on track too, you mentioned that there was a five million dollar deal on the table if y'all can get Baby and Master P on the same song. This is for the second album, and the second album. Why well, I feel like I told you a story. The second album didn't come out on No Limit though. <clears throat> Why well, I feel like I feel like I told you the story. For this, the viewer, for the viewers tuning tuning in who may have not saw the. No, story I'm just yet. saying like I feel like I told it on the platform. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. <clears throat> We got to deal with, well, we asked P about the second single, right? P was supposed to put the money out for the second single. P told us, fuck a second single, go get another budget. Oh, like do another album? Right, which mm -hmm. we got 500000 again. Mm -hmm. We were so busy trying to make you go platinum, thinking about getting money off record sales. I understand. He like, fuck that. I understand the vision. Right. We dropped ourselves on priority. How, how, hold on. Did, so, did that create some friction with Master P, which y'all dropping? Because y'all was yeah. still, he co signed y'all. Yeah. Said, so. Listen, bro. Um, you know why I created fiction, friction? Because of the way we did it. You ever saw that NWA movie? Yeah. For you sure. saw Ice Cube did? That's what we did. Oh, yeah, I don't know nothing about I'm telling you real talk. With the bats and that? <laughs> no, we ain't going there with no bats. With me, <laughs> Big U. <laughs> Dodo, um, who else was with us? Probably Tweet. We went to the office. Dude now was Brian Turner. Like, Brian Turner was the dude, he was a young dude, right? So his daddy hadn't gave him the company. So that's why a lot of motherfuckers was on him like that, if you pay attention. That's a real character. That's a real dude, right? But he liked the hip-hop. But we went in that bitch like, we got to get off this shit. Like, you know um, Boswell, one of the P right here, man, called P, and P had to call all door and tell him, get the fuck out of that office, man. Oh, Big Boss. Yeah, Big Boss. Big Boss was in the office. Because, mind you, P never had a built an office in priority building. We went straight, like, they don't know where we coming from, and we had such a good relationship with them, right? Well, we got up there to that office, doing it went crazy. And he let us out the country. Because, like, on in his defense, he didn't understand what was going on. He thought we were perfectly happy, happy. With his leg, he made the album go go. P told the buyers, tell Doe, get the fuck out there. He gonna handle it. And a few weeks later, we had relief paper. Mm. We met Russell Simmons at Macy's when they was promoting Baby Fat. Ask Russell Simmons, you know, we, um, we went to, walked up to Russell Simmons and was like, yeah, you know, this Mr. Marcello, Russell Simmons was like, I know who he is. Mind you, Brian, they got three and a half mics on, from Source Magazine. One of them niggas in the South doing that. 
like I was lyrics. Wasn't no niggas in no, check it. Wasn't no niggas in no South, get no three and a half mic, like check the No Limit album, bro. You got to be talking Fiend or Mac or Slim or some shit like that, or Mama Mia, some shit when you come talking about getting three and a half mics because like that's us getting judged by New York. So you had to really be doing some shit. And I'm not saying like anybody who didn't get it wasn't, it shit, shit, shouldn't have got it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying that as in like they tapped so deep into us like they was watching every fucking thing we doing. Like they looking at every line. So for me to get three and a half mics, he knew exactly who I was. And he was like, him and Dodo exchange numbers and shit. And he was like, um, this one I was supposed to sign with Def Jam, bro. That's why we was so fucked up when Dodo got here. But what happened was, we got in touch with Russell Simmons. Doe made it clear that he had a relationship with Master P and Stunner. Mind you, at this time, this is the No Limit, for No Limit don't, in Cash Money, don't fuck with each other, right? Who the first person to have No Limit and Cash Money on the same album? Me. No niggas doing that. No Limit and Cash Money ain't fuck with no niggas. If No Limit fuck with him, Cash Money probably ain't fuck with him. Right? Vice versa. Right. So, Russell come up with this amazing idea of, yeah, if you can get Baby and Stunt on the same thong, song, you have five me. Distribution did three albums. Damn. We call Stunner. Stunner says, send a fucking record. Say it. <clears throat> Stun did 32 balls on that bitch. That third one, geez. Okay. <clears throat> Sent that bitch to, to Pete. That's the hardest verse. Peace, I ain't fucking with that. He ain't fucking with it. This is, and I, I can tell you this also, right? The nigga started put us up on some game too. He was like, when y'all do it, put it out independent first and then sign your deal. Like making some independent money first. <laughs> like he was really putting us up on game and shit. Because he knew once the shit got done, we had the fucking deal. He's like, nobody has done this. Then that, the people was like, man, I'm not fucking with that. Mm, period. What was that conversation like? I just told you. Say we need you to get on this song with Stunner. We already got the thing about to send it over to you. Because I ain't fucking with that. I'm sorry, oh, it was just straight to the point like that. I'm not fucking with that, period. Yeah. And did that, that leave a sour taste in y'all mouth? Because that's five million. That left a sour taste in dough mouth. They ain't, you know, like. But you the rapper, though. All right, but you the talent. Doe and P have a relationship. So, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm back as the rapper. I'm letting the CEO get it done. That's what they asked the CEO to get it done. It's not like a motherfucker telling me, okay, you got to go get six shot. I don't have a relationship with these two dudes like that. It's, 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 it's Dodo who has a relationship. Was I mad? You fucking right. But sour taste in my mouth. Like, I had just went go. I really ain't getting no fucks. And now, I'm, now we got stunning them too. I, right. I'm more or less. I'ma show you type motherfucker than that. Like, but I can understand why I didn't have a relationship with Pete like that. Like we had made money together and shit, but we wasn't locked into where he owed me nothing. Gotcha. So I couldn't. I ain't gonna tell you I wasn't mad, but I was like, all right. It is what it is. It is what it is. I, I know I got that stunning word, but I got 32. That's a motherfucker. I'ma show y'all. And you put and I had then already had stunner verse, yeah. so I'm listening to that stunner verse like, okay. Oh, did P hear stunner verse? We didn't get a chance to send it to him. He just as soon as y'all had y'all just threw the soon conversation. We had the conversation yeah, to send the record. He stunner it. wasn't tripping. Stunner was like, Damn. send the record. Even although they wasn't, they had the friction. They went. Stunner fucking was him. looking at this shit like, I'm about Goodness. to get you niggas rich. I'm gonna show you niggas how to get rich. Put the egos to the side. But he couldn't do that. Wasn't no ego really with stun up with dope. So it was like a common denominator. It's, I'm telling you, it's, it's a common denominator as in it, right? So if I'm a nigga who I don't really fuck with you like that, but it's really not a problem, but I fuck with him, fuck with him, and in order to get you some money, I ain't really even got to fuck with him. I just got to give you a verse and do that. What's the big because deal? we're not agreeing that we ain't asked him nothing about no videos. Now we probably would have got into that. That probably, of, of course, I know that we would try to work that right. Yeah. But I've been like, I, you got that, and especially like I really helped you. Like I ain't, I ain't got to. I don't have to. It's not a thing of 
you constantly coming back to me to do this and do that and do that. I'm gonna throw you this fucking alley you. Now you go through some, throw some niggas some alley you. Sure. Cause I know I'm gonna put you in the position. I ain't getting no money, but I'm gonna put you in the position to make some money. This is the best position I can put you in. That what you need? All you need is, you need 16? I'm gonna give you 32. That was Thunder said. Because he gave us 32 balls. Man. And he cut the fuck. That's one of his best Man, that's verses. Classic. That's classic. Yeah, yeah. Stunner the hardest verse by far. Yeah. And that's cause I think it was. Lil Wayne wrote it for him. Nah, I think, I think like that verse, you could kind of tell he wrote it yourself. You could tell it's, it's a talk. Yeah. It's a talk, but at that time, you got to realize we hang around each other and all this kind of shit. You know, it's right? real. So I know it's swag and all that kind of shit. I know I stun the rocking, right? So we around each other and shit. And like, I think, like, they got a picture, bro. We're doing, I wasn't even there that night. They got a picture, bro. I'm, I'm going to give you a picture, too. Pop, we're going to show it. Is doing Stunner at a concert, at a BG concert. We don't went to give him the record that night. So I saw the vibe. I know Stunner wrote that shit. I was like, oh, we got us one. 32. I knew we got us one. I, I think the butler. I wonder if he wrote that in mind, like, damn, P gonna be on this too. I, I can figure that, but say, <laughs> lend to the verse again, and then you might say, all right, now. He's sending some shots. Yeah. Man, I, don't, <laughs> I think it's criminals. balls. Like, that nigga was running, son, because I bungee jump behind the motherfucker. Yeah. That nigga was going all. Yeah. And then he ain't stopped. Say, let me tell you what's so cold, right? You know, street nigga, get what we're trying to do. We're trying to make that bitch too strong. We ain't know where to cut it. I swear to God, boy, dude was like, no, we ain't putting that whole verse on there. We gonna cut that bitch. We gonna make that bitch two record. Say that nigga with the going off so much, nigga like I bungee jump behind a motherfucker. Nigga said, where we gonna cut it at? Yes, we try to cut it at twelve. Let him rock. Sixteen, twenty. Yeah. Nigga said, fucking let it go, bro. For sure. Classic. But I could guarantee you, like if 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 uh if Doe was still alive when we dropped that album and shit, Stunner would have shot the video. Yeah. Oh, that nigga was cutting up. Like nigga was telling about it, but that nigga cut up on that verse. So can I can I ask you this, man? That's that's bird, man. You've mentioned in our previous conversations that y'all got a solid relationship. What was your connection like with Master P, man? Like even when you was around him for the Five O Four Boys, your your debut album, Going Go, all of that, you know. Me and P has never had personal conversations. Always business related. Like me and Stunner, they sat down with me and him talking. Just me and him. Like, regular conversation. I never sat down with, like, P like that. Like, it's always somebody around. Uh, it's love, though. Because I seen them, like, two years ago, bro. At the, um, at his birthday party. Like, the quickest he seen me, he can't give me some love. But we never have those kind of conversations. You kind of see what I'm saying? So, I respect him for, for the love that he showed me and, you know, he put me in a good position because he taught me shit about copyrights and publishing. But personally, like, I don't know him. Now, can I say he done me favors? Yes. For sure. Like, but I can... Change stun is a motherfucker who I can get on the phone, call two niggas. Say, say, Rodney Dollar, stun him. Homie gonna call me. Like, just to see what's up. What's going on? What's pop? I saw you post a picture of you, Birdman, and Hot Bezo. In Miami. So you was not only tied in with Bird, man, you was tied in with Hot Bezo too. Hot bro is from Magnolia from Magnolia. Yes, yeah, like like that's one of the names you ain't mentioned, you ain't mentioned so far during the conversation. Hot my dog. Like that's like that's why I don't never I, I just I, that's why I stay out of the business. But hot my but you that a lot of the reason sometimes I don't mention shit is because motherfuckers already know. Hot is the, the fucking quarter brick of the Magnolia boys. We have a group together. Me, Hot Bezo, C Two and L D Herd, the Magnolia boys. You ain't never heard none of those records? Like, never heard of that album? I ain't gonna lie to you. That's the movie that Stunner talking about shooting too. The Magnolia Boy. I know you saw that ball of black and two. No, but yeah. the Mac you have never saw the Magnolia Boys before that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the Magnolia Boys of the group. It's me, High Beasel, L D Herb and Stone. I mean at me, High Beasel, L D Herb and Cito. So Cito's an actual rapper. <laughs> the ball head dude. Oh, right? Cito, get yeah. down, boy. Yeah. I just thought he was just like the stunner on one of the Let me Cito yeah. old money. Yeah, he been getting to it. Old money, that's old money. Yeah. That's my dog, though. See to my dog. I'm gonna have to go back and do my research, yeah, man. Yeah, see to my dog. There's probably gonna be some people in the, in the comments like, man, what? Yeah, like, <laughs> see to my dog. You ain't heard about the See and too. Like, them dudes, like, that's motherfuckers who came through for a nigga, like, probably when we was on our ass, bro. Like, 
Um, and it was calling me to come do the um, Magnolia Boys album. And I was really, like, fucked up. Remember around the times when I was telling you about shit? Like, as in, you know, during this rap shit, bro, it's like, you get some checks, right? And then it just slow down. And then some will pop and they'll speed up because of things that's going on, like, right? Like, the way you at war, they'll just pop up and start playing so much more. Or how you like it, baby? Somebody will get it and then start playing some more. Somebody will just call me to license some shit of one of my records for a movie or some shit, right? So, you, I'll get those kind of checks. So, um, we doing the, um, we about to, this one spit the first start at the, uh, Remember when Spitter did the 12 um, albums in, in, um, in 12 months? Yeah. We like at the end of that, right? It's like month nine or some shit. And um, they come get us to go move. And man, my fucking light bill dude, rent doing all that kind of shit, bro. This is real talk, right? My oh, rent doing during the mixtape. When he was doing the mixtape, right. them back to back mixtape. Right, he right. Said, another month, another tape. Right. Yeah. So yeah. classics, too. I really, I ain't, I ain't really want to go. So, right? So, me and Spitter making up all kind of bullshit to Nago. Spitter tell him he won't take the dog. Okay. <laughs> cool, put him in the thing. Exactly. We're going to go get the cage and put him in the thing. I'm like, what, man, what the fuck? Uh -huh. So, some kind of way, told it on the phone. So, I'm like, what's up? Why y'all gonna move? And I tell him what's going on. He's like, man, don't worry about that shit, man. I got you. T -t 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 say, take care of that phone. Uh, Boom, I'm on the road just like that. Like, I was all like, was touring. See, they like them niggas come through for a nigga when they was in downtown, bro. Like, I always say that shit. Like, that nigga tow, like, he a motherfucker. Yeah. I, I do just uh, one more question. So, what was, uh, you mentioned like a like a gangster or a stone, a booby black. What was Hot Bezo like when y'all was coming up, man, back during that time? Wild as them. Like, when you saw them dudes, it wasn't no, for me, the high boys, it wasn't no, no, nobody the baddest or none of that shit. Like, all them niggas was with that shit. So it wasn't no he better than him. Uh, he, see, I remember one time, you know, this funny too, because what actually was actually as crazy as, you know, Dooney was alive when we did Hamburg, right? Nah. Yeah, Dooney was alive. I, I want, I'm almost sure doing it was alive when we did Hammer, bro. Because motherfucker was like, you ever had a conversation with doing it about y'all uh, fucking with Hammer, bro? And I was like, what motherfuckers also don't know is how cool me and doing it was. Like, I had a baby mama in character. And I went to school with doing it, little brother. So, I met Dooney on the weirdest shit, way out in character. And then he ended up in the Magnolia. Where is Car Carrollton? Where is it's like the 17 wall. That's like where Dooney was originally from. Okay. Like I had to be a mom in Piggy Town. And Dooney, like Dooney them stayed, like Dooney mom and them stayed right down the street from me. So me and Dooney even had a different kind of relationship. But like you never looked at the high boys as in who the hardest or none of that shit. Like them, it was just some sly niggas who was with the shits. But you never said like, I think I'm gonna fuck with him instead of fucking with, nah, that wasn't happening. All of them was cool. But all of them was like that. Like, and I think like a lot of us in the project was so funny. Like, we never saw them like that because them niggas was, was they handled all this shit on, on the outside of the project. So it was hard for niggas to even fuck with them in the project. Like, it had to be interior beef to them to get to them or they step out of bounds just going somewhere. Because you wasn't coming in that project fucking with none of them dudes like that. We was like, that's not happening. Cause every like you got to keep this in mind, bro. Like when Blab, uh, when they was on that other side, hustling this shit, Blab and all them, I'm on the other side selling weed. And we're right across the coast from each other. But just the dope smoke weed. So when they was out there in the morning, I was out there in the morning too. I had to see them same kind of customers. But I could, I definitely could tell you, like we never looked at none of them as in. This one was better than that one or this one. Because we knew if you fuck with one of them, all of them was coming. And you ain't know the other little niggas. Like, it's a lot of mini hot boys that they, that motherfuckers just don't know about. And I, don't mean, I mean that as in motherfuckers who was going to go for them regardless. For sure. There's nowhere in the world gangster could have got killed on Willow Street. Like, that shit, Sterling, Mosquito, hot. Boy, that shit wasn't happening. Stone. 
uh, ski boo, logger, not on weather. You wasn't pulling up, not no, indeed you wasn't pulling up around there. We knew everybody. If we saw one of them bad calls or something, all of us was around. In that Magnolia, like, we like a family. That shit's still like that to this day. So we damn sure protected each other. Like, I, I know I used to always feel like, boy, if I do something stupid, all I got to do is get back to that project. Because I know niggas in, we look at people, like, we know who from there and who not from there. We got a hump on Willow Street. You come down that hump wrong, nigga know where you ain't from there. A bitch shit this big, bro. If you come down there, you fuck around, leave your transmission. Now. No, I'm talking. I'm telling you real talk. Like the hump is that big. Kelly had one too on the rattle. Like if you go up this hump the wrong way, a nigga can see how you coming down the street. He ain't from here. He flying, boy. If you flying down Willow, coming from my way, you don't have no idea that that hump coming. Everybody on Willow, even the kids looking at you, like who the fuck this is? Because we all know they got that big ass hump. Yeah. That's crazy. Something that small to let you know if you're from the area and not let people know. Yeah. Right. Just how you drive. I think everybody probably had those certain things. Because I know one thing. I, I learned that bitch on, they had one on the ride in the Cali. I learned that bitch too. Yeah. You hit that bitch wrong, you left your, your water pump, your transmission, probably your engine. But we knew that on Will. Like, when I was old heads, um, rest in peace, Bowerhead. Bowerhead, I, that's how everybody knew about that bitch. Bowerhead hit that bitch on the motorbike and flipped. And fuck this whole gorilla. From then on, everybody knew about that fucking bump. Man, you know when I think the movie I got the hookup, uh, Master P had a character. Barrowhead, that's the same one. For real, for real. Barrowhead, my OG. Rest in peace, Barrowhead. See? That was actually him who was in the cast. Barrowhead was a real person. Damn. Barrowhead was a real person. That might have been around the time Barrowhead was. No, 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 no. That wasn't around the time Barrowhead got killed. Because Barrowhead was still around. I'm definitely not the time. Because I was. With Barrowhead, when I was fucking with um, when I was fucking with uh, when I was fucking with um, Ball of Fall, Barrowhead was connected with me in Houston. Every time Barrowhead would come to Houston, Telly Hankton come to like I used to be fucking with Telly and, and Telly Uncle and all them in Houston and shit. So, like they used to always come to Houston because that was like the balling spot. And after the hurricane, like I lived down there. So I actually had bought a house in Sugarland, so I'm living there. And everybody from the city coming down there every weekend and shit like that. But I'm, we damn near living down there. Well, I'm living down there actually. Me and that same day, me and the fam gang, all of us moved to Houston when I signed up with Ball of Hall. Okay. Everybody moved to, moved to Houston. Man, okay. Um, it's, it's one more person I want to ask you about. Um, you mentioned your relationship with Master P was more so business, but. Um, like you like you talked about in the video for Humbra, C, C Murder in there, you know, and you mentioned like Slim and C. What was your uh, relationship like with C Murder? C Murder was the first person to take me on too. Me and C Murder had a, 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 a personal relationship. Like C the first nigga to take me on too. Like I was on tour with the whole fucking Cali or Wango and all them niggas on the big old bus. Magnolia. <laughs> yeah. But C the first person to take me on too. Like, remember the dude I'm talking about, Birmingham, where I got the FM from? Mm -hmm. I met Birmingham Boo from C Murder. Me and Birmingham Boo still friends to this day. That's who used to book us in Birmingham. So I met him as a promoter, but we just developed a, a hell of a friendship. Man, Birmingham Boo, like, 70, and he's still looking like that, like he like OG KC. Yeah, bro. He said C Murder, the first person to take you on That's tour. That's the first person I went on tour with. Um, you said y'all had a personal relationship, though? Yeah, so like, y'all don't, don't just kicked it and chopped it up. My brother, one of my brothers, Bud, was C Murder Manager. Like, so, me and C, C didn't been up late nights just chopping. Sitting downstairs at the bar and spots. Like, that nigga showed me, like, the hotel and all. Like, I just said, boy, I ain't know nothing about that. And like, C hit a nigga and be like, say, Say, bud, you ain't settled with me downstairs at the ball. Boy, we ain't no number. I know I didn't. I know that ain't downstairs at the ball. Let's go. We sitting out there just kicking shit. But we been in all kind of. I've been in all kind of crazy shit with you too. Like definitely been. Like I remember a time like it just was like promoters used to be so fucked up, bro. So they always try to play you out your money and shit like that, right? And C did not play when it came to his money, right? So, we go to, I don't know where we at, bro, but a promoter trying to get me to do, like, she's saying, like, 
he gonna do a few songs, right? Because you know a motherfucker get you there and be like, all right, we gonna pay you this for this amount. Then when you get there, instead of the 50, then instead of you doing a 30, a 45 minute show, they want you to do a 15 minute show because it's packed and all that. So what the motherfucker trying to do is get me to long the show out, right? Because he know see all they're doing this 15 minutes. He said, okay, he said, look, this is what we do, right? I see, like, I'm going to go on first. You going after me. And when you get you doing where you at, Wody, how you like it, baby, and ham, bro, walk to the bus. I'm like, see, you serious? He like, walk to the bus. They going to walk into the bus. I'm like, all right. I get you doing it. I walk to the, I walk to the bus to promote the hottest fisheries. See, like, but what he was showing me is then you you like sometimes you gotta compromise for things that you need to do when it comes to business, but you can't be used as in when it comes to this shit. And what the dude was trying to do was just like use me on time because C had then went on first. So he was getting me to do like as I'm walking out, he got records playing with C murder and all this kind of shit that I'm supposed to perform. I'm like, but no. But I didn't understand it then because at that time, I'm like, well, I'll perform my whole, see, don't trip. You get on the bus, nigga, I'll perform my whole album. Don't worry about it. I'm getting the same check. I ain't doing no tripping. But she was like, nah, that's not how business go. You know, when they book you for this, this the time they book you for. So he was really teaching me the game, and I really didn't realize that he was serving my value. Oh, that's 100, man. That's 100. What you think about his, uh, his current situation? I've heard multiple people say that. He wasn't the person who actually took that. I think we all know that. That teenager's life, man. We all know that. Look, well, what you think about it? It just shows you the system. I mean, we all know that she ain't do it, but it shows you the system. The system of this shit is different, bro. Like, motherfuckers want your ass to get you. You, you just clear as day, bro, because everybody in the world knows she didn't do that shit. You synced it, like, these conversations, like, it don't even be making no sense to have because the shit be clear today. Like, you see motherfuckers, witnesses, recant their statements and all that kind of shit and all that, right? And they tell you why they did it and all this kind of shit, but nothing don't move on it. Yeah. yeah I mean, he been fighting for some, some time now. He been locked up with since, like, the early 2000s. Yep. Um, and they just keep denying him, man. Um, Mac, too. Mac fought a long time, too. Yeah, Mac, yeah. Welcome home to Mac. Mac been home, with almost two years now? Yeah, Mac ain't playing. That's my dog, too. Yeah, shout that's out to him. That's my home. Man. You know, that's the home. Me and Pop. You know, me and Mac Pop. That's my dick. For sure. You got some Mac stories for us, man? Was you around when he did the shell shot and all of that? Oh, um, uh, well, I can tell you. Oh, I have a Mac story for you. <laughs> yes, Hold on. Uh, before you say it, let me uh, switch this battery. We getting back. We back to it. Back to it. Um, we were talking about I, Mac. I had to ch yeah, change my battery, man. But yeah, you was talking about Mac. You said you got a Mac story for us? I got a song called I Live By and I Die By, right? So I did the first verse. And uh, I do the verse, we leave. I come back, that nigga Mac got a verse on there. I was like, boy, ain't no fucking way in the world. I had to put another verse behind. Like, if you listen to the song I Live By and I Die By, that's why I do the... Um, I came back with a verse talking about all the guns. I was like, um, um, 25 made me miss her, 38 I love her, traded in the 10 million to get his little sister. Me and Mr. Marsberg was tight as fuck, but ain't no way I'm giving my chopper up. I love to hear the sounds of that M16, oh, yeah. two 23s, and I don't know. I, it's just the, it's the verse off that Mac shit. I live by, but I had to, I went rope. All of I went and wrote my verse over and named all the guns. I know exactly what you're talking about though. That song. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I had to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. traded in the ten million to get a little sister. That's my shit though. But I had to go do. I had to go do a whole fucking verse over fucking with me. I ain't never wrote no verse over fucking with me. To this day, like I don't write no verse though. Mac is the one person. But I had to go back in. I didn't write my verse over. I had to go back behind him. Like that was supposed to be a two verse song. I'm like yo, I would tell him. Make you, you know, I, I, I shine you in. on the song. Yeah. I, I had to go back in. Yeah, is that the only one you think lyrically could have sparked with you on No Limit? Just being honest. Fiend could go. Y'all already um, had history too, though. For right. Now. So we come up like we come up running that shit. Um, Slim could go. Like me as in balls, you know, I'm I'm always that motherfucker can't touch me. But 
Like niggas know when it come to balls, balls like I'm it, I'm it. Like I'm, I, I paint that fucking picture. Like I'm, I, I definitely paint that picture. And niggas know that though. Like, so niggas know better to get in that wrestling with me. Like I don't, you gonna give me your best. If not, you gonna look like shit. And I always been like that. Like I'm, I'm, I'm different when it comes to the pen. Like I, 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 I look at that shit. I write. I look at that shit like writing scriptures. So everything got to make sense. Like, I go over that shit to make sure everything makes sense. That's why I be, most of the time, like, the shit is so easy for me to remember. No freestyling or nothing. Oh, no, I don't do that. No punching in, you writing everything. Like, I don't, like, <clears throat> punching in, like, once I have my shit together, like, as in, like, any, like, if motherfuckers ask me about music, like, sometimes, all I have to do is put myself where I was, if I could put myself where I was in my mind at that time, I know everything I put on. So like a nigga could say, hey, um, run that old head, so run that um, running back or some shit like that. All I have to do is put myself back in the zone at that time. And I know what I was going through, so I kind of know what I was writing about. Because I really write about my life. Like that's why the shit be simple shit, bro. Like. It's simple to me, but probably not to other people. But it, yeah. it should be simple to me because I just be right about the shit I go through. I go through shit every day, so I could like. I told you, like the shit with him. Yeah. Like with nigga gonna make a new genre. Fuck with us, bro. Man, um, you mentioned Fiend. Another person you mentioned was uh was Slim, Soldier Slim, Magnolia Slim. Um, long before the No Limit days and all of that tough guy days, y'all was already locked in. Definitely, like, me and Slim used to rap at DJs and shit. Like, I used to rap at DJs and shit. I remember one time we snuck in, um, uh, I forgot the name of the fucking, Newtons. We used to always go rapping Newtons. UNLV, nobody, like, UNLV, that's like one of the spots where UNLV started. We used to always go sneak in Newtons and fucking rap. Like, that's what we, we, we started there in that DJ and shit. Okay. No, for sure, man. Uh, what was a uh, what was a uh, before he transitioned and became a household name on the music side? You know, like Magnolia Slim. Like, what was what was he like coming up, man? You were seeing him around the projects and stuff. For, in the beginning, like when we first started out, Slim was our barber. Slim and Rashid was the barber. Okay. Both of them used to be our barber, so Slim was cutting out here first, then Rashid started cutting out here. And he was cold. Oh, he was cold. Oh, I didn't cold them clippers. Yes, bro. I knew it was cold with him, Clipper. But, um, bro, I remember one time, knowing I knew the impact Slim had, bro, um, just when I knew Slim was big. So, everybody talking that shit about soldiers, right? This what niggas forget. It's these fucking Jordans that Slim bought back, too. Um, I don't know what none of this. We figured that shit out. He had the white ones and the black ones. So, the whole project take a trip and we go to, um, I want to say Biloxi or some shit, all of us got them bitches on. But Slim had start wearing them bitches in concert. Like, you know the one I'm talking about? We gonna find them bitches and we gonna put it up. But if they got the white and they got the black. Like, it was the, it was right after, I think, it's probably around the time we figured out Reebok wasn't gonna get him no motherfucking money, so he, but he really had us all with these Jordans on, the Magno used to wear just these two colors. Damn. And we all went to Biloxi, all of us had them bitches on. And I was like, man, that nigga, my, man, that nigga got us wearing Reeboks, this nigga to change this shit to Jordan's. Trendsetter. And nobody really realized it. I was like, man, this nigga cold with it. Hold on, so, so the soldier reeds come from him? Yeah. These soldiers made for walk. So the, is he, the, he's not the, he, he's not the first person out, out y'all projects that was wearing them. He's more he's so the like popularized. the first nigga called them the soldier Reeboks. So, I don't know if he's the first person wearing it, but I know after he put them on, we all called them soldiers. So, them stupid motherfuckers start trying to make camouflage soldiers and other. We wasn't fucking with them. It's crazy of how they did that year later. All we fucking with was the black and the white ones. We were black or white. That was soldiers. But no, you couldn't wear no blue with them peanut butter soldiers. That was the motherfucking soldiers. It means they had to be black or white. You know what I'm talking about? Them navy blue ones with the peanut butter soul. Exactly. I used man, to be a reba. I used to mess with them it. whites and them blacks, man. No, you wasn't. Back in middle school. They had to be black or white, brother. That's what I said. Them blacks and them whites. That's what I said. That's the same thing he did with Jordans. Yeah. 
Like, you're going to see me coming in the They're going to tell you anybody that from the Magnolia, they're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. We yeah. went to Biloxi one year, but we started rocking them bitches. And I was like, this nigga just them took us from Reeboks to Jones. And we was rocking them bitches. Like, the bitches were soldier Jones. <laughs> like, a lot of motherfuckers probably don't remember this, but I'm going to take them back and they're going to remember exactly what I'm talking about. Why are you soldier slim, man? Right. And y'all may maintain the relationship up until his passing? Yeah, it's like him and, like, the day he passed, you know, we, me and Spitter was on our way to his house. We was going to the concert with him, bro. Me and Spitter was around the corner getting tennis in the Foot Locker. When we found out he got killed, we was on our way to go meet him at the house, bro. You know, him and Spitter was locked in, and me and him was already locked in, right? But we were going, he had a show that night. We was meeting him. We meeting him, Jig, we called Jig, Jig at church or some fucking where. And me and Spinner stopped to go get some tennis before we went over there. They called us and told us why we was getting the, getting the tennis that he got shot. We didn't think he was dead neither. Oh, just like Dodo. Uh, them, been, them got shot before. Like, it, saying the person dead and the person got shot, like, motherfucker saying the motherfucker got shot, nigga, like, yeah, oh, here we go with this shit. It's not like a person is dead. Like, you know what I'm saying? So we definitely ain't think that, boy. We pulled up around there and me and Spinner was actually together, bro. On our way to his house, bro. So we was right around the corner. We are on, we in Gen, we already in Gentilly. We at the Foot Locker getting tennis. Yeah, I made it over there. And y'all take. Um, yeah, R.I.P. to him, man. Um, <clears throat> man, um, no, nah, Cello, man. I definitely want to link back up with you to chop it up to get some more stories. You know, this, this ain't the stop, last. Brother. This yeah. shit don't stop. You know, um, man, a previous interview you mentioned, you know, you had some new music on the horizon, man. I'm going to tell you, bro, I told you I got to get fired, bro. We put the clip out about you and the Spitter album. That went crazy. Oh, and no, all like, that, like we gonna, that's some summertime shit, but I'm just saying, like, inspiration. But I be needing a little inspiration. But I'm definitely, I'm back on the music shit. But like, I'm into that movie shit, I told you that, bro. I was checking out the uh, the movie you had texted me about. Um, yeah, you gotta check out. Uh, I heard, I saw what you said. Super Rich, okay. Kelly Yovo, Pretty Kitty, my homie Nelson. Um, no, it's a lot of shit that's popping, bro. Me and the soldier about to shoot a movie too. That's, yeah, that's 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 it. I shout out to him, man. Yeah, the soldier. Like, he's definitely underrated when it comes to, like, I think people, he under, like, the soldier's definitely underrated when it comes to business. Like, that, that, he a young dude who really know business. Like, he's not a motherfucker who's trying to be his part. Like, he really understands the business. Like, that nigga could do deals with me. I'm telling you real talk. Like, he understands the business. And, you know, he went to school for a lot of shit. So, oh, like, like he, yeah, he different, bro. Like, he a real businessman. So it's easy, like, we do a lot of, me and him, do, we definitely do a lot of business. Oh, for sure. Him and Willow just dropped the uh, album, too, that shit sick. No, oh, for sure. Shout out to him, man. Um, I know he's definitely uh, made it an effort, made it a point to keep his, his father's name alive, legacy alive. You know? Yeah, but he, bro. But he like, got his hands in a lot more than music. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Like, he different, bro. Like, he definitely different. Like, he understand the business of it. Man. And it'd be good to see young kids who understand the business because, like, with them, you don't, you don't chop game, you swap game. Because they be teaching you shit at the same time you trying to teach them shit. You know what I'm saying? So we had a conversation. Me and that nigga be on the phone for so long as a motherfucker saying. Man, so you, you just mentioned that the game. Is, is it true that you start off, did they get the million dollars worth of game from you, man? Say, bro, like, I, listen, bro. You, I've been doing, listen, I used to do chopping game on fucking um, Instagram. Gilly, yeah, it definitely used to be in the shit on chopping game. But chopping game is a million dollars worth of game. You know, that's. Kind of far fetched, but I'd been chopping game on the internet, bro. He said Gilly was in the. Uh, yeah, he used to be in the. He used in to the be in the live and all that kind of uh, stuff. Yeah. Shout out to Gilly, though. That's, my, that's a homie. Oh, you got a relationship with Gilly? I know him. Yeah. Definitely. But I ain't saying no nigga took it. Like, like motherfuckers see things and revamp them. Like, or you make them better than what they were. That's not taking nothing from the motherfucker. Because I still have chopping game. So, That's chopping right. game ain't got a motherfucking thing to do with million dollars worth of game. We chop game. They give a million dollars worth of game. It's two totally different things. But we chop that shit, though. We chop, chop that shit. Man. Give us, man, sell all the youngsters. Man, anybody tuning in right now, what's some game you can drop on them before we sign off, dog? About life, man. How to navigate this world and, you know, you always Say, bro, like, listen, bro, like, 
I like my game. It, it's not game that I be giving, bro. It's not jewels or nothing, bro. It just be things that I learn from other people, and like I put them into perspective. And like motherfuckers ask me how I last, I say I, I live day by day. But I navigate through this shit the same way other people do, bro. Like for his game is. It'd be so natural, bro. It's like, just because you asking me to drop some game, I can't because it's, it, the shit be yeah, so natural. Yeah, like, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always like a conversation that sometimes I realize what I told motherfuckers. I, my pops always told me I could lead you to the water, teach you how to fish. And I might feed you, but I ain't cooking your shit. So, like, motherfuckers could get laid at the water, you could show them how to fish, but niggas just not there to cook your shit. Yeah. Is that the give me give me my roses? Uh, no, that, that ain't that. No, that's I, like majority of my shit becomes records though. Yeah, that's a different like song. That's okay, okay. Yeah, lead yeah. you to the world, teach you how to fish. Give and me I'm my like, flowers. Give me what I'm thinking. I, I got a song called "Give Me My Roses." Yeah, that's what give I'm my thinking. Like, yeah, yeah. Look, listen, bro, niggas wasn't on "Give Me My Roses" before I start saying that shit, bro. Like, think about this, right? You hear uh, people like Drink Champs and all that kind of shit say they what they give you? Give them flowers, man. Yeah. All right, flowers is giving you your roses, right? Let me just show you what. Let me just show you the difference in it, right? They just say flowers. You know why they say flowers? Because they don't understand the definition of giving you your roses. You know where giving you your roses come from? I said, listen, bro. When they buried my grandma, they played a song called "Give Me My Ro Give Me My Flowers." So the shit is like a Christian song. So that shit is like some southern shit. You see what I'm saying? Like, we get that shit from old church hymns and shit like that. So that's where that shit come from. Like, they give me my roses and give me my flowers and all that kind of shit. That's hymns that we were singing in church and shit like that. Like, when old people die, they sing that song. So that's why it's so relatable to us. That's why not everybody be on the shit, give me my flowers, give me my roses and all that kind of shit. Man, I've been saying that, but I don't take credit. I don't be on no taking credit for shit like Boom, like motherfucker give me credit for boom, right? I didn't I didn't even come up with boom. My partner skip, UTP, juvenile, oh, yeah, I know you already know. Oh, come from boom, right? What I did was I said hashtag boom. Yeah. So I made boom building opportunities out of mud. I'm known for that. When I got on BET, I said Marcelo Ghetto, gather in higher education, teach others. And that's what I do. I make acronyms of words to keep your motherfucking ass in tune with it. So now people just Relate me with boom because I always put hashtag boom, but at the same time, Skip always say boom too. Oh, for sure, shout out to him, man. That's the homie though. He's still doing his thing with the uh, was it chicken and watermelon? I think. Yeah, chicken and watermelon, yeah. pot belly. That thing got all kind of shit uh, going. He's still on, getting it in. Sad thing is the ultimate hustle. That's what I call my nigga. Oh, for sure, for sure, Mr. Marcelo, man, it's dope chopping up with you again, man. If they want to link up with you, uh, do some business with, how, how can they reach you, dog? Hey, bro, listen, um, what my Instagram at? Jet Life General Cello. I don't even know why I ain't never changed my shit. But it's crazy because my a lot of motherfuckers be uh, uh, related to that though. But Jet Life General Cello, um, I be on Twitter too though. I'm back on Twitter. I'm oh. Cello Ghetto. I don't be fucking with the TikTok and all that kind of shit though. Or the YouTube page. Boom, multimedia. Pow. Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Just one last, man. Why would you say you need to change it, the Jet Life General? I just Cello? thought about that because I always see people changing their shit, and I've never changed. Like that's been the shit. That's been mine since I started. But I you still, do you, you still consider yourself a uh, Jet Life? You fucking right. De most definitely. Come on. Oh, oh definitely. I'm the general. That shit. I'm definitely the general. No, for sure, for sure, for sure. And it may, it may be a Spitter collab album coming. I guess you want that so bad, huh, bro. Relax, bro. I got you, bro. I got you, brother. Don't no, for sure, for sure, I got man. you, brother. Don't trip. Until next time, Expect man. Expect signing out. Yeah, humble soul, man. Mr. Marcelo. OG shit, you smell it. 100, we out. You dink.